Welcome to another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Josh. Hello. Hi. Yeah, thanks for having me along. Really good to be here. It's great to have you. For folks that don't know who you are, why don't you give us an introduction? Who you are, where you are, what you do? Yeah, perfect. Uh, well, uh, Josh Anglesey. I'm a system architect. Uh, I work for a Microsoft partner in the UK called Expedition, and we specialize in uh, the dynamics uh, areas of uh, Customer engagement and then also business central. Uh, we do we have plenty of dealings with Power Platform as well as a result of that. I've been working for those guys for a number of years. I've been in the business application space for, uh, for a decade or so now. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I just really love getting involved in the product, thinking of new ideas and you're trying to get in more enthusiastic about the community uh, for sure so i've done plenty of things and that's that's kind of how i got the award in the in, in the first place well being being in the space that long i mean there's been a lot of changes in the technology obviously with the rise of the power platform so what were you working on prior to, to power platform what was kind of your background yeah um well from like a studies point of view i, uh, I did business studies I, I never did anything to do with it mm. Uh, but I had a the, the course I did at university allowed for a year in industry, and uh, the company that I worked for was a large UK bank, Lloyd's Banking Group, and it was in the IT area. I kind of just got given it really, and um, after I'd finished, I thought, well, I'll, I'll go into that space. That's what I've learned about, and um, I started off as a kind of like a super user, IT coordinator for a, an end user um, who dealt in like specialist resin products across uh, across Europe. And they had a really old version of uh, the Vision uh, 2.6, which mm-hmm. is from like 1989, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was like my first exposure to ERP and then what later became the other names of, of the product. And yeah, I, I, I talked to it really quickly. I really enjoyed dealing with the little projects that they had and wanted to kind of scale that if I could. Uh, for myself and, and progress a little bit so i joined the support team and a different microsoft partner and that was, that was an eye-opener um, because you've got loads of people on loads of different versions and you need to know all the nuances of the different versions and the quirks of oh in that version you don't have that and that's that's a little bit broken in that one so it's like a yeah. full-time job just doing that I, you know that's some of the uh, the like the articles on my blog historically that have done the best are exactly that, where it's a version comparison and talking about those nuances, which can be tricky. It doesn't help that every once in a while, Microsoft will do an update and say, well, you know, they this feature which had gone away and it's back again. It's And you have to be on a week by week basis paying attention to what's happening across all those versions. You do, and it probably also helps you with content sometimes because you'll think, well, that part that they took away was actually quite useful for X, Y, and Z. So why don't we try and repurpose that but in like a more modern way? And I, I lean towards that quite regularly with Power Platform especially. So a lot of my blog posts are more to do with, let's try and do something in business, with Business Central data or in Business Central, but with the Power Platform instead, so I can do it in the lowest coding possible way that's that's available to me. Uh, because that's the kind of mantra that Microsoft are pushing out now is that if you can't, can't get it done and change your business process, try and Power Platform first. If that isn't going to work, then you can go ahead and do the customization right. in, in Business Central. Well, you think that that is... Uh... I mean, that just makes sense. And hopefully organizations have gotten, well, not hopefully, they have gotten a lot smarter about this idea that it used to be, uh, you know, organizations would start off thinking, we'll go build this custom solution. Well, because we want it, we want it uh, tailored for, you know, the unique things within our organization. But then every time Microsoft did an update, solutions would break. Every time a new version came out, solutions would break. Microsoft changes its, strategy around the solutions th- those things break and so it was a full-time job that was a lot of the you know the enterprise the it pro role was 
fixing broken solutions within an organization. And so building on a platform uh, means that, you know, in theory, that as the platform changes and evolves and new things are added, that it's just a, it's a modification. It's a tuning rather than rebuilding every time. Yeah, and, and the development tools themselves have, have really stepped up their game. I mean, you see using Azure DevOps, for instance, or GitHub, then mm-hmm. being able to push out things just as text files, and then all of a sudden you don't have to do any of the code merges yourself and, and that kind of thing. So it, yeah, it's very good for version tracking and those types of things. Yeah, it's, it's, much, it's a very exciting space to work in. I think I, that's one of the things I really love about working with Microsoft especially, that it is always changing. There's always something to learn. I think initially when you join the space, that's quite a daunting thing, especially when I was younger. So I always felt like I, I knew some stuff and then the rug was pulled from under my feet and I had to learn a lot of new stuff. Yeah. But when you, you kind of think, well, it's actually quite exciting and you can end up specializing in certain sections. Well, I think that's what kind of drew me into the you know the IT world uh, as well as being being a guy with uh, two marketing degrees, uh, and, and uh, I, I think in, in my thirty year career I've I've had uh, a actually a marketing role one time, like a true <laughs> marketing role, and uh, you know I did that for about two years, and uh, I was like now nah, I need to be I need to have you know half of my time over within the technology, and that I feel more comfortable in that space. Uh, but it's, I, I mean, really, uh, I like your story too, coming from not from the technical, you know, background per se, but finding a path in. How long have you been an MVP now? Uh, a month. A month? <laughs> I got it. I got it so you're, so you're yeah. a seasoned uh, MVP. You've been around for a while uh, inside the program. No, but it's, it, it's, but that's exciting to say. So what was, uh, how did you become an MVP? Like, what was your path towards becoming an MVP? Yeah, uh, well, initially I kind of started to think in so lockdown times in 2020, um, I had I had a lot more free time in the sense that part of a big big part of my job was to go and see customers. So you'd be you'd be traveling for a number of hours, um, you'd be with them, and then you go and travel home, and all of that time all of a sudden just became available to me, which was really strange because I've been going maybe five years straight of just being in like a hotel a couple of nights a week or, or something like that so that was really weird uh, and I was always home as well which is always also very strange yeah and um, so I just sort of felt like I could I had an appetite for continuing to do a little bit with with, with the product and I just figured okay well I'll, I'll start off by doing some forum um, work mm-hmm. so the uh, Dynamics Community Forum uh, posted a a lot of entries on, on there over um, sort of 2020 to up to up to this point in time now that was a big part of it uh, i decided to start doing a blog uh, which was yeah just to kind of like one it's you might have a, a go at something and you think that's quite neat and interesting maybe someone else will like it i'll, I'll write about it mm-hmm. it's also, also i find it's helpful I'll, I'll probably end up forgetting exactly what I did when I was in that headspace. So if I write it down there and then, uh, I, I can go back to it. Sometimes I, I, I might. Uh, the other thing I ended up doing was a few uh, virtual events. That felt really accessible to, to me personally. Uh, I've got a young family going away. Now doesn't feel as, as easy to do. Uh, but doing some of the virtual events was, was very accessible and they were all very well organized as well. Uh, helpful set of people to, to take you along and it's just 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 have a go at it really uh, doing presentations isn't anything new to me i, I have a my primary role with, with expedition is to do pre-sales yeah so i'm kind of like the guy who just plays with the software and, and just shows that's people a how great to, how skill to though that that's something uh, and people can learn that i know that it, it that it's very intimidating for people that are brand new. Like the fact that like, I can go and answer questions of the forum. I can do a blog post, but to go and present and, uh, and you know, put yourself out there uh, and, you know, potentially have people beating you up. Although people are nice. Like, I, honestly, I've heard horror stories. I've never experienced in all of my time, you know, anything like that personally, certainly I've had hard questions and there's a way to, if you don't know the answer, the best thing to do is not 
fudge it, but saying, hey, that's a great question. I don't know, but let me go find out. If, if I can't find the solution, like I'll go and research that. I actually do that. Like I like forum uh, uh, questions for that. I don't do as many now in that. I do a, a, a live, a monthly AMA with other friends as a panel, but by going in and doing that, like answering forum questions, you may know part of it, but it also is, it's a great way for you to be like, you know, that's a great, I, I don't know the twist on that question. Let, let me go research that. Let me go find that out. So if I could share the piece that I know, the half of the answer I can provide and go and dig and more quickly find the other half of the answer and then provide that. I mean, it's rewarding personally to go and do that, but helps that one person and potentially others who find that thread. Yeah, of course it does. And it really appeals to problem solving type skills, because it might be a topic you think, oh, that's, that's really interesting. I'm glad they've asked that question because now I want to know the answer. And then that's usually what makes you enthusiastic to go ahead and then get something done with it. That's why I found it, at least. Yeah, for sure. Well, what's, uh, so how do you kind of keep up for, because that's another popular question that comes out. I mean, especially within like the power platform world of what's happening with dynamics, there's a lot coming out. It, it's it's very fast paced. So what do you do to kind of keep up? Yeah, so given that we're not only looking at biannual updates, sometimes they might throw in um, some updates on monthly increments as well. So uh, yeah, I think using uh, Microsoft Box is a, is, a, is a huge thing. So I will look at release notes and, and things of that nature. Uh, but my, probably my favorite place is, is Twitter. Uh, I'll follow certain hashtags. Uh, I'm part of a few different lists, and I follow a number of different people, either in, who are MVPs already in those different spaces, um, or just really avid community contributors. And I find that really helpful. It's, it's it's a nice community to engage with as well. Uh, you don't have to be scared to put yourself out there. People are, are very pleasant. Um, as really long as you uh, as long as you ignore the. Uh... The politic, the politics and religious, you know, conversations, which <laughs> you should do in, you know, in in, uh, in professional discussions anyway. But yeah. you know, it, you but if you that stuff pushed aside, yeah, it's a tremendous resource, uh, a great way of finding people. I'm doing more and more. Um, I know communities on LinkedIn have not been as popular over the last few years. But uh, you know, hashtags and finding just like on Twitter, fi you finding people and topics via hashtags on LinkedIn is another great resource. But I do that. Twitter is up throughout the day for the exact same reason. Yeah, definitely. Actually, well, you never cool. know what people to come up and, uh, and post on it. So you want to you want to keep in in tune with things. Well, yeah. Well, and again, it's it, it's a great way to drive the conversation too, and just uh, further amplify if you have. Uh, well, now I'm just kind of getting into this. See, this is the marketing hat coming on about <laughs> like amplifying your message. But if you're doing things, if you've answered a hard question in, in a forum, which you've then expanded on and shared your solution and the research that you've done in a blog post, if you want to spread the news and and and, and answer additional questions. So it's this continuum of conversation that happens. And for a lot of like uh, in some people, I know there's a lot of anti-Facebook people out there, but the Microsoft communities, the technology communities on Facebook are massive. Mm -hmm. uh, like the, the Teams community that I spend a lot of time and I find questions that we answer in our AMAs, um, that one has, I think like 60,000 people in it. So they're pretty sizable, yeah. No, I didn't know uh, yeah, yeah. So it's it's one of those places where, in fact, I, I was talking with a friend uh, through her local user group who had removed Facebook app and was trying to ignore it and blames me for drawing him back in, making him go look at Facebook again <laughs> but because of all the community activity. Okay. Um, but, well, it's very, very cool. Well, what else is, is, is going on? Any other events? What's the rest of your year look like? Anything else of, of note that uh, we should take a look at? Um, I'm going to be doing a number of different blog posts. I think that's probably going to be my main activity. I'm trying not to do as many events this year at the moment, just for now. Um, mm -hmm. I recently brought my we had a daughter in, in May. 
she was due in August, at the end of August. Oh, okay. She was very, very premature. Yeah. You know, so this year has been like, I mean, 2020 wasn't very good either, but 2021 has been quite rough as well. So we're just enjoying being at home, having her. And I think next year I'll try to look at doing, doing some more events. Um, we had the Directions really recently. It's one of the Directions EMA, which is one of the big ones for Business Central, at least. Uh, but yeah, I didn't get to go to that this year, but hopefully next year I'll, yeah. um, I'll go. Hopefully I retain my MVP and uh, I can go as an MVP. That'd be really cool. Well, one thing I'll say is that uh, commend you for that because there's no amount of, uh, I'm going to just steal somebody else's line here, but there's no amount of uh, success at work that makes up for missing out on those family times. So uh, yeah, I saw the picture. So congrats on bringing, bringing your daughter home and, and yeah. uh, hope all is well for that. But uh, well, uh, well, very cool. Well, it's been great to, to yeah, we're doing, we're doing really good at the moment. That's excellent. And, and, and I really appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to chat and get to know you. Hopefully we'll see you in person at the MVP summit next year. I don't know yet whether Microsoft will be doing the in-person. I sure hope so. That'd be cool. Yeah. Because as you know, I mean, there, there, there's no amount of, uh, and I'll just butcher that a quote even more, no amount of online uh, events can make up for the, the face-to-face -face contact, you know, the human connections that's made when we get together physically you know uh, uh in the same place so hoping to uh get back into the norm next year and be able to see people um at the the event yeah we've missed we've all missed it so it'd be nice to get back into the swing of things yeah definitely well folks that josh that, that want to find out more about you and get in touch with you what are the best ways to reach you via social yeah so social um you can get me on the handle of uh, at josh anglesey and uh, from a blog point of view, uh, if you want to hit me up on that, then that is joshanglesey.wordpress.com. Excellent. And I will, of course, uh, it, you know, for those that are watching the video, catch this out on uh, YouTube or via social. Uh, if you go to buckleyplanet.com, of course, I'll have a blog post that I'll have all of Josh's links. So you'll be able to find his information, his MVP profile, his blog, uh, you know, all of those things. So Josh, really appreciate your time and uh, hope to uh, meet you in person soon. Yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate it.